All right. Hello, world. I'm doing things slightly differently this morning. Uh, well, yes, it is still this morning. Uh, oh, did I actually take that Claritin? I guess I did. Got the allergy thing going, so that's awesome. Uh, in other news, I'm out of Sprite, so I'm drinking Dr. Pepper. Diet Dr. Pepper, whatever. Also awful for you, I know. I've got water over there, so just drink water. Whatever. Which I think that's my last Dr. Pepper, too, so grocery store run today. Out of food for three days, but just now, just kidding. Um, so, got some code going last night that's pretty cool. That's, well, whatever, it's just a quick script to, like, split some videos. Um, so I've got this project where I'm making these random music videos for the YouTube free audio library. Um, and I'm doing that by pulling down NASA videos, chopping them up, and then reassembling them uh, randomly. And so I had that all in one script that would do look at the MP3 file, figure out how long it was, go grab a video, cut it down, pick a random part, put it on the pile for assembly, rinse, repeat until you've got enough to build the video and then build the video. Um, but I realized that's not a really good efficient way to do that. So um, I've, I'm splitting out into three separate things, a straight downloader and then a splitter and then the assembler. Um, and so I've got the downloader and the splitter going, except the splitter's not going. Um, it's it's doing the splitting stuff, but I keep, or thankfully I saw this on the first on the first one that it tried. It gave me this, it stopped at 11% of splitting the video, and it gave me this too many packets buffered for output stream. Uh, and so I started looking around and, close that. This apparently has been an issue that was opened four years ago and was last updated three weeks ago. So I, it, it's at least still on the radar. Like it would have, it could have been more of a problem. It was like four years ago and everybody thought it was solved. Um, but so people are still seeing it. It sounds like what I need to do based off all of this is pass this flag to FFmpeg with like 9,999. Uh, I don't really know what max muxing Q does at all um yeah you know, maybe click on it does that go somewhere uh demuxer i see i don't know what any of this stuff is input file demuxer encoded packets muxer output file stream copy is a mode selected by supplying copy parameter of the codec Makes FF, FFmpeg omit decoding and encoding step for the specified stream. So it only does demuxing and muxing. It is useful for changing the container format or modifying container level metadata. metadata. Huh, okay, now wait a minute. Um, so I'm using scene detect to do this output line splits scene det -E -E yeah scene detect split on scene detection so this is just the one that i've got so why do i feel like Save images, scene detect. Finding optional sensitivity. Splitting the kind of, you guys want to use the copy so that there's no re-encoding. So the options ensure the op output videos are visually identical to the input. Longer processing time, greater file size. Okay, so let's just try that as a hack. Uh, it's in PyCharm. So the trick with the file, and so the other thing that messed with me a little bit was, so this is the source file here.
and the thing that messes with me a little bit is it starts off with a whole bunch of like little quick clips right here that are each like a second long. So boop, 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 boop. And so when I first started looking at the videos when it did the clips, another window, no. All right, that's it. No, it's not. I don't know what that is. Oh, that was where I was transferring it. I don't need that one. Clips. I think it's OB, right? Yeah, OB. So, like, I, I looked at a couple of these clips, and I thought the clips were fried because it's just, like, this long. And it stops. But that's how long it was in the video. So I went back and looked. But it also had the problem, and so then what I realized was somewhere around here, and you can actually see where it happens, I think I know what's going on, is in this video when this starts, it does all these quick clips, and then it switches to this person talking here, which that one kind of worked. But then right here, you'll see it go to a different quality of video. And so I think what's happening here is this quality of video somehow isn't making it through the FFmpeg buffer. But let's see if we throw that HQ thing at it. Because if if this so the trick is FFmpeg, like if I was just talking to FFmpeg directly, I could throw that mux thing at it as a command line. But I'm not talking to it directly. I'm running a tool called Scene Detect. Scene Detect is making the FFmpeg commands and then sending them to FFmpeg directly. So I don't have direct access to it but I might be able to pass this HQ. So I think I can read, I, there's an output file from scene detect that shows you where it's going to split. So I think I could actually parse that file, build my own FFmpeg commands and add that Muxer thing into it and then run them myself. I don't want to do that. Um, I'd prefer not to do that, even if this takes longer to do. Um, so I'm gonna go back to my test suite here. I think this is still gonna pass because I, I was messing around with it last night. Um, but it should all still pass. Yeah, okay, so everything's passing. So here's here's the scene detect command that we run. And I don't know where, I don't know if it matters where we pass HQ. I'm gonna put it after detect content and just see what happens. Uh, we'll put it right before split video. How about that? Yeah, so that's going to fail because we need to have in our command build here. And this is one of those, like, this This script is actually pretty simple. Um, but I went through and did kind of like a full TDD on it as, as an exercise to try and figure out, or not, as, not to try and figure out, but as an exercise to practice TDD stuff because, like, it's kind of nice on the smaller stuff when you're not having to get your head around all the big things. Um, there's still some stuff that I would probably do different. Uh, and I kind of want to get, I guess it's actually something I should look for is like test patterns, like generic test patterns. Um, Cause I'm still like, I'm reinventing the wheel I'm sure and doing it poorly in lots of these cases. Um, all right, so that's passing. Let's make sure they all pass. And so I want to test thing here or test config so let me clear out clips ob this is the one that's the problem let's see if we run this what happens no such option h that didn't work oh so that's failed to scene detect list scene options Oh, I wonder if you do it after. Why don't you do it after? Split video. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That makes sense. It's weird. I was thinking split video would need to be the last thing in the line for some reason. But it's just another thing, right? So if we do that. Oops. I'm gonna assume this is gonna pass. We'll test it in a second. So just test, make sure we're good. We're good. Come here, run. Okay, so that's working. Let's see if it goes. Um, so it takes a minute to do the scene detection. 
And then what this does is... So, scene detect, you give it an input file, which we're passing the path here, an output file, which we're passing the path there, which I should also do this. I forgot to do this. Now we can see what's going on. Um, so giant. Need to figure out how to like make it where I can see it and still be blown up enough, but I think that's... Those are that, like breaking laws of physics. All right, so detecting scene, there's all that jazz. Okay, now we're going. So if this stops at 11 again, or earlier, not so good. Ooh, that's taken some time. Oh, okay, there we go. I was like, wow. That wasn't moving quickly at all. Also, still not moving quickly. Um, 16 frames a second. Okay, so it's a little bit below real time, or it's half a real time, basically, because I think it's about 30 frames a second. Um, somewhere up there, it'll tell you. Uh, and maybe one is like 29.24 or whatever the time periods are like that. So I can't really do anything on this one right now because it'll freak it out. But let's see if it gets, makes it past 11. Nope. Too many packets, buffered an output stream. Okay, so that didn't work. <sighs> okay, so that just got more complicated. So there's another command that you can use that's copy that just pulls stuff and takes it out, but it doesn't work great because it relies on keyframes. And so if the scenes split here, keyframes might be here and here. And so it splits you not where a scene break happens. Um, not sure if that exactly made sense. I need an iPad that I can like draw stuff or something that I can draw stuff and throw it up on screen. One of these days I'll wire that in. Um, okay, so here, actually, hang on one second. I need to open, sorry, this one. I love this. It always looks like alien code somehow. That's so cool. Um, I seem to pop up in Excel. I don't think anything work stuff is going to come up, but just in case. Bear with me one second. We'll get this thing open. All right, so this is the CSV file. And the scene detect outputs. And so I think if we just do FFmpeg commands looping over this first row, so it's not, the first row, I think, is the detection points of the scene. So it's really kind of starts at zero, goes to 0 0.25, goes to 11.2, goes to 12.2, goes to whatever, whatever, whatever. So I think if we just grab two of those and then push them in, we can actually test this on the command line, right? Here's the command line. Where am I going? Uh, desktop. I can get rid of browser 21. That was yesterday. Yes, I can get rid of that. Um, also, sorry, real quick, we're gonna look at that. Uh, I wanna see if anybody's responded to this question from days ago about why so this one still blows me away. Hitchhiker's Guide to Python, which is every time I look up package stuff, it comes to this, has this thing about testing. Somewhere down here. Modules, modules, valid packages. Did I blow past it? I did. Uh, 
has this little thing right here about how to set up your tests for in this given test structure. Couldn't get it to work. Put a question up on Stack Overflow like however many days ago. Six days ago. Nothing. Blows me away. Never seen that before. But anyways, I'm done checking. I, like, I don't think anybody's going to get back to it anytime soon. So I just kept that on my desktop for a little bit. Um, so we've got NASA videos. Obi. This banjo is not doing it for me right now. Or this fiddle. So there's our raw video. So our command's gonna be ffmpeg. Input. Uh, here, let's make a do. Make a dir, make a, make a do. Um, test clip output. So. about part of a video starts at one minute and 30 seconds and copies eight seconds but we want to so ffmpeg input equals ob all that jazz start i'm gonna go straight to the spreadsheet No, we'll start at zero, zero. Wait, zero, zero, zero. Wow, it's super, <coughs> super exact. It probably gets that. And two. Oh, you know what's cool? Hang on a second. Where was it? No, hang on. There's a new way in. What was the command? This is the command? Nope. This is the command? Nope. This is the command? Nope. I thought it was one of those. Um. Hang on a second, I need to find it. Uh, they have now in iTerm2, composer. Yeah, look at this. FFmpeg, I, oh, does it go to, does it auto complete on the thing? that would be cool. What was it that? Yeah. So command shift period brings up that. Oh, it doesn't auto complete up there. That's a bummer. Or it doesn't tab complete. That would be awesome. But what this lets you do is make your commands up here because I often go to like and then what will happen is if I run it and I need to adjust it I just I just open this thing back up and rerun it um if it would just tab complete in there that would be awesome I mean it's great but now that would make it like awesome so we're gonna go to there and then we just do the output which is going to be test clip output one dot mp4 and then shift return to send command. There you go. 
Oh, so really what I need to do is figure out which one crashed. Because I need to see if I can repeat the error. So one, two, oh, it's actually numbered for me. I guess I can look at that. 15 is the one that crashed. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So in between twenty-six, let's look for the actual time stamp. It's up here. Find twenty-six. Yeah, it's much more specific. So go back here. We can do this. We can do this. That's so cool. And then the next one is this, 37, whatever, jazz. We're gonna call that 15. So, shift enter. Let's see if this could be the one that explodes. It's weird, it's not giving the same progress bar. I guess that's something scene detects doing. Oh, that worked. Okay. Uh, let's try the next one. Er, yeah, it's about ten seconds. Why did that work? Where did that work? Where did that work? Where did that work? Um, does it show you the actual ffmpeg command that's trying to do? All this stuff means something. Twenty nine point nine seven frames per second. Output MP four to scene one. Wait, scene one. Oh, it shows you the first one and then goes from there. Maybe that's how it's getting the. Okay, so there's all the time frames. And 15. Yes, yeah, so that was 15. Oh, 26 through 37. Oh, wait, but it's 16 that choked, right? No, it was 15 that choked. I'm confused. Okay, so somehow the way that FFmpeg's throwing it over to... Scene detect... Splitting input... With that... FFmpeg version, developers, configuration... There's all the stuff that FFmpeg has going for it. Input from there. Output to there. Output from FFmpeg scene one shown above splitting remaining scenes. Boop, and that, yeah, so it, it's only showing you the output from the first run from FFmpeg, but it doesn't actually show you the command, which would be super cool. So here's my command. That's what I'm running for FF, for scene detect. Output directory set. Loaded one video, downscale factor, scene list CSV format, 
Kodak Arg set to. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This might be what's getting passed. Okay, so here's another feature request for this. Would be like multiple of them or being able to like, so I guess I could comment it out, but I'm still, because I want to keep this one. Okay. Oh, almost was I typoing that? So So I think if we put all this stuff right here. Yeah, like I want multiple of these. That'd be awesome that you could like scroll through or whatever. Okay, so let's see what happens if we shift, shift return, shift return this. No overwrite existing. Is it just a yay flag in there? Also, did you see how it actually sent line by line by line? That was kind of cool. So do, 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 do. there we go. Yeah, so that's going to do it. I kind of expect this to fail. If it doesn't, I'm going to be super confused. I mean, I could just go through and do the thing. See, why did that pass? Wait, that's not the right thing. Here, test video clips. Sorry, there we go. Yeah, that's where it broke. So why isn't it... So I'd like to see if I can figure out how to do this straight with scene detect, but not really, right? Because I'm not going to be able to control that. Hmm. So that's a splitter. So really the splitter is just going to be... Well, so, okay, yeah, you could actually do it this way. You could run scene detect, you could get the CSV file. So I've already got the CSV file. Then you could add something to parse the CSV file and make the FFmpeg commands. But I still feel like... I don't understand why that one choked. Because that's... All right, let me go look for just one more second here. So here's the scene that right before the explosion. Oh, wait a minute. There was another scene. There's the hallway. Oh, no. Okay, so how it works. It was this scene. So why is that different? What's going on? But it kind of doesn't matter. Because I'm still... I'm still going to have to deal with it. Start frame and frame. Oh, that would be slightly easier to do. Um, now I got to figure out how how we want to test this. Um, 
All right, so let's grab... that CSV file. Test. Data. Uh, sample data. Oh, I can't paste it in there. I got to do it this way. Uh, so copy that. Dev, NASA splitter, tests. See, I keep thinking I'm getting close to this, and I keep running into all this junk. Um, Cause you could just now I'm just now I'm just trying to figure out how to like test this because I want to like test the building of the commands. Um, so test command set. Def test ffm peg commands. Uh, so expected equals, we're gonna make it a list of dick ff ff mpeg command. So even though you could do this as a straight list, I often find that I end up needing to add extra metadata to it. So I just make it a dictionary with just one thing in there to start with. And then if I don't need it, fine. But if I do, I don't have to go back and refactor everything. It's a little bit of premature optimization, but like not really. So FFmpeg I input before uh, so how do you do start frame I'd love to do it off the frames though I don't guess that really matters start equals here we're gonna do this one that timeout equals that I'm going to go ahead and throw the rest of that stuff at it that um, that it had here see I don't know if the C that's the copy prefets Preset slow. Wait, I thought there was a high thing there. We're going to start simple. And then output file is going to be output.mp4. I just want to get this start by just getting this going. And then we can work from there. Actual is going to be the same thing. We're just going to run this to see if we're lining stuff up. Self, third equal, expected, actual, do we have our test harness in place? We do, okay. So then, ns is the name of our thing, ffmpeg commands. So run that, that's gonna fail. Def FFMA commands commands equals we're just gonna do this for now. Return commands. So 
can pass. But now if we call it and actually assign it, that's where we're gonna fail. Failing, good. Put this in place. Hard coded, passing. Okay, so there we can do our work. Um, wants that. Okay, cool. Whatever. So now, how do we get to that? Um, Oh, you know what we should do? We should do this differently. This is a mistake I made on the other one. Okay, we're gonna back this out. It should just be FFmpeg commands. So that's gonna explode. Now we got it, okay. So now we gotta populate that. How are we gonna populate that? And the way we're gonna populate that is we're gonna load a CSV file, right? So yeah, this is one of those, I could do this relatively quick, quickly just by hacking through it without the test, but the test structure is helpful to my brain. Or I wanna learn how to test better. And that's, this is how you learn, is you do it weird and wrong and awful. So we're just going to pass it a CSV file. So this is going to pass because that doesn't exist. Let's CSV pass. Not passing. and then load CSV file, self ffmpeg commands equals that. Passing, and then we should be able to take this out and just make it a list. Okay. So that's where we're gonna populate ffmpeg commands. And then we've already got a CSV path. So we're in tests, sample data. Refactor. Sample one, that's CSV. Which is weird because it's not exactly a CSV, but I think we can deal with that. Okay, so we're passing, we've got it going. So with open. Uh, uh, CSV path. Read as CSV file. Now I gotta go look at how we do CSV stuff again. Read a single line. 
So here's going to be the trick is what's going to happen if it's got a different number of rows, right? Because this has way more columns than these. Reading CSV files. Reader, we don't need a dict reader. Put that over there for a second where I can see it. Um, CSV reader equals CSV dot reader. So we're gonna need to import CSV, CSV file. So let's import CSV. CSV reader. Print row one. Let's just do that for a minute. Actually, what we could do is if we just put a pass here, does that give us a way to do a debug? I can't remember. CSV path, it does not. Exception, file not found error. Oh, look at that. Lightning bolt and everything. File not found. No such file directory sample data. Sample one CSV. Well, why not? That's right there. Oh, it's coming in through. That. because we're just passing the test, this is the thing that's actually running it. Exception, CSV file not found error, come on. Ooh, that ate all of everything. Oh, no, there it is, just put in more lines, I gotcha. CSV path, all right, what am I doing wrong? CSV path. For here, we need to go up a directory, go into tests, sample underscore data. Am I misspelling sample again somewhere? No. Is this gonna help us? Sample data, sample one CSV. No such file directory. Oh, and fake file system. Uh, I'm covering it with fake FS. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Oh, so I can actually just put that anywhere. But I gotta figure out how to push it into the system. Um, all right, that's cool. Bye, fake FS. It's a way to do real files, I think. Docs. Hi, fake FS. Where is the docs? Documentation at GitHub pages. Currently released version. Test scenarios. Sort files, trace file, patching. All right, give me one minute, I'll be right back.
All right, let's figure this out. My mouse is not working anymore. There it goes. Access to fate file system object. Access to fake file system object via fake. So I need to move that CSV file in because I need to read the contents of it, right? In this case, path will hold a real file system path instead of a test. What? Okay. If initializing a global variable using a file system function, the initialization will be done using the real file system. Read that again. If initializing a global variable Using a file system function, the initialization will be done. In this case, path will hold the real file system path. Inside the test. To get these cases to work as expected under test, the resulting module containing the code shall be added to modules to reload. The pass module will be reloaded, thus allowing fake file system to patch them dynamically. All modules loaded after the initial patching described above will be patched using the second mechanism. Reload module tests. Test. Example using PyTest. Module to pass. For real example, it can be saved here and use for implementation, allow reuser. Access to files in the real file system. There we go. If you want to have read access to real files or directories, you can map them to the fake file system using add real file, add real directory, assemble link and real paths. They take a file path, a directory path, a symbolic length, or a list of paths respectively, and make them associated accessible from the fake file system. The contents of the map files and directories are read only on demand so that mapping them is relatively cheap, okay. To access the files, to access to the files is by default read only. But even if you add them with read only false, the files are written only in a fake file system. Real file systems are never changed. Okay, that's cool. Make the file accessible in the file system. Okay, so. Using PyTest, real file in the picture, but so you gotta put it in the same place. Setting the file system size, suspending patching. I think I've I think I've got what I want, but I just want to look around and see what else is in here just to kind of explore a little bit. Troubleshooting. Okay, whatever. We're gonna go do it now that we've done that. So Let's do this. As a quick example in Scratchpad. Cuz so I want to see this. I want to have this as a thing. Let's do this new directory. Pi fake fs real files. New file file. Let's 
test pi fake fs real file i guess let's do that user bin environment what no interpreter come on Why didn't I pick that up? Okay, let me fix this. I thought we already did that. We did not do that. Okay, so pi and v. Here's a basic. So we're in the directory. Now we run want to run. Need to make commands that split stuff in here. Pi env, virtual env, 3.9.0, venv, scratchpad underscore pi. Make that real quick. Then pi env local vnv scratchpad pi okay pi charm open recent scratchpad let's see what this does now new window all right so it caught it Time for a scratch pad. Pi and V. Yes, let's configure that. That sounds great. Uh, class. Basic test, test case. Set up. Self set up pi. Oh, it's not installed yet. Let's install it. Fake FS, fake FS, not fake, fake FX. It's a different thing. All right, so let's see if this finds it now. Ready? Found it, good. Come here, do this. Self, set up, pi, fake FS. Cool. Def, test. Fake FS read. New file sample.csv. A, B, C, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's your sample file. Plugin supporting CSVs are found. Okay, yeah, sure, why not install them. Choose plugins to install or enable. Lightweb plugin editing CSV files with flexible table editor. Oh, it looks cool. Shouldn't be Auburn Boulevard and Heisman Way. Oh, somebody from Auburn wrote this. Not cool. It's a plugin for Excel file. You can read the content in IDE. And I don't want to mess with that right now. Rainbow. Oh, that's not bad. 
That's actually really smart. That's really smart. Let's do this. Table editor. Oh, look at that. Text, table, text, table editor. That's pretty cool. I don't know why that one's not rainbowed. Whatever, it's cool. I like it. So save, so add real file. failed oh well I'm not actually calling any test code add real file is not defined maybe self add real file oh here we go should test these if name equals main main See, it's weird. I think it actually, see that works even though unit test isn't called because somehow this gets pulled in. But I still feel like, like and I'm like, I'm afraid that's gonna break stuff. Cause this just has you do this. This doesn't actually have you running test yet. Unit test. If you're using fake files, the arguments can be passed to fake pi, which will pass them to patcher. Okay. See, this doesn't actually show you how to call to run the tests. I'm just doing it with unit test, even though unit, even though it doesn't like the fact that unit test isn't right there. See, no one, are, uh, no one are, nowhere under here does it call you, does it do the test? Well, actually, does it just run? No, it can't. Could it? Here. Oh, okay, so it just runs the tests. I got you, without unit tests being up there. Here, yeah, okay. Cool. So you don't have to call unit test. So you just run the file, it goes. Did not know that. So what is a good way to demonstrate this? Class. Basic. Expected equals, it'd be a string, one. Eh, we can make it up that. Actually equals one. It's like, I just want to get a, a test thing set up here. So I can just look at it really easily and know what's going on. So we should still pass. Whoa, did not still pass. Not expecting an indentation block. Oh, yep. I see what's going on there. Oh, now. There we go.
So B equals basic global B. B load CSV, which is spelled CSV. CSV path equals CSV path. Return one. Still passing. Yeah, and so now we can do this. Well, so load CSV, and really what we want is B dot test value. This is more complicated of a test than I was hoping to make. So this is going to fail, but when we load CSV and put that in there, it'll pass, maybe, got to run in here. Nope, did not. How about if we make that equal and then run it? There we go, passing. Um, With open CSV path read as CSV file, CSV reader equals CSV reader, CSV file. Port CSV. How's this doing? Are they still cool? Still cool. So that just proved it because the file's there. Because if we name that that, it explodes because it's not finding it. No such file. It would be cool. I wonder if you can actually pass it different place to put it because that would be awesome that did not work no such file directory oh, this is probably passing it a different thing oh, see why that'd be so cool no such file directory csvx yeah it'd be neat if you could have Pi fake fs copy real file to fake fs. Add a real directory name is you can find adds them to the fake fs. How do you use fake SS in conjunction with that? I'm just going to kick into this for a minute because if you can do this, this would be cool. Modules may not work with Pace over several rows. It works by patching. Add real directory. Quit 
two codes of magic to get working, which your problem is Jenga development insists always loading a template from disk. And Babel. But these were impossible workarounds without using the additional skip module, so I ended up doing this instead. Real OS. Import real OS. Real open. Copy and file real path. Real stat, real OS stat with real open. Real path, real RV as real file contents. Fake file S file. Yeah, so you can do it that way. I completely confused Google. I win today. Real open. List of custom arguments. Using custom arguments, patch your unit test. File creation helpers. File path, file create, file test contents, test. Access to files in the real system, right? Fixture path. Add real directory. Test using fixture OS join fixture path fixture one text as if file contents are copied to the fake file system only at this point. With open join self fixture path fixture one as file. Contents read file contents are copied to the fake file system only at this point. It's kind of ridiculous, but I want to see if you can do this. Oh, yeah, interestingly, because you could. Nah, yeah, okay, whatever. You could like set up to have like modules in different places or whatever, or config files in different places. Import real OS, import real open. So this looks for name and real OS, OS listener. Okay, let's see if we can make this work. This test is kind of giant. Um, copy and file real path, real path with real open. So we only need real open here, I think. Real open. Hmm. 
real contents. So couldn't you just do with real open sample CSV? I'm just gonna do read as real file. Create. some file some file path dot text contents equals real file dot read Could work. Import real open for uh, cannot import name real open. Well, that was a bummer. 2017. Uh, that's what I was afraid of. Um, Crap. I don't know why I've got my head into this one, but I don't have to forget that hard coding all those paths is brittle as hell. Right. A couple of points. There's already test case. Copy real file. So I need to roll your own. Basically does it see. Usage. Automatically find a patch file system. Public methods. Public modules and classes. Unit tests. This is where I should have gotten to. This is what I was looking for. I figured there's a way to do it. Next. Copy. Nope. See, it's tricky to like find stuff sometimes. Deprecate, oh, new features deprecated in favor of add real file. Copy real file remains only for backward compatibility. Also, some less popular argument combinations have been disallowed. Okay, so it got deprecated. I just want to put it in a different place. I don't really know why, I just do. Add real file, file path, read only. Yeah, it doesn't let you. Dirt path, read only, lazy true. Add 
add real pass, path list, read only, lazy. Really seems like there should be a way to do that. Fake file system module, fake file system classes, add mount point. Oh, this is the same thing. Add real file, so it didn't switch pages. It's all on the same page. Add real file to fake FS. One of these days I'm gonna spell it right. Fake files with either provide everything or code. This method is also safe against file test since we are aware of all the changes. No routing in files. Texas files and defaults read only. I think I was on here before. To replace with a functional error and sort resource path. Let's go to test it. Add real file. Oh, come on. There's got to be a way to do it. Create file content test. Yeah, see, this is all. I'm down a rabbit hole right now. I recognize this. But, like, this would be. Like, I'd like to solve this once if I can and not have to deal with it again if that becomes a thing. Like, it doesn't. Kind of doesn't matter, but, like. Kind of does. Except not really. Create dirt, create path, find real. Whoops. Initializing a global variable using a file system function, the initializing will be done using the real file system path. In this case, path holds the real file system path inside the test. To get these cases to work as expected under test, the represented modules containing the code shall be added to blah, 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 blah. The past modules will be reloaded, thus allowing them to be patched dynamically. All modules loaded after the initial patching described above will be patched using the secondary measurement. Given, the given that the example code shown below is located in example sut, the following code will work. Set up PyFakeS modules to reload equals example that set. Uh oh, so it's coming from a different module. Ah, oh, gotcha. File path through bar, file path through bar, file path through bar, file path through bar. Where is it calling the actual path? I think this should be called file path. <sighs> I don't think you can do it easily. I was kind of hoping this would work. Where'd my thing go? Can I import name real open?
How do you look at... All the stuff that's in there. Nope. Where's the source code? Show the source code. Oh, it's on GitHub pages. Where's the source code? Okay, I know it's create directory. Git create set. How do you get back to the five fake FS? It's a documentation. Change log, code Google. Is this where it is? I assumed it would have been on. was introduced Google wide at testing on the toilet. Source. Where's the actual source code for this? page. There we go. Weird. Took me a minute to get there. I couldn't flip that. I want to see if we can find this. This will be a little experiment. Because I want to have, like, I want to be able to have, like, different files and load them into different directories, but not have to, like, set up the directory structure inside thing. And you could just do it, like, Well, can it read? I guess here's a silly question. With open. So I haven't created the file yet. Sample CSV read as CSV, whoops, as CSV file print CSV file. So that exists. We're right next to it. If we run this, what happens? Doesn't exist, right? Can't import name real open. Okay. You go away for now. No such file or directory sample file. Yeah, so. But if we add this here. Oh, nope, still doesn't work. File exists in fake FS. Don't do it twice. No such file or directory files. Test passed. Wait a minute. We do this. Test failed. No such file or directory in fake file system. Right. So. But if you add the real file from there, that does it. 
So, I mean, you could read the real files in, set them up, and then move them. But that's gross. Like it's doable. I don't know if it's worth it. Oops, sorry. Let's get up. Five fake FS. Fake file system unit test. OS module, path module. For the open built in is bound to a fake open. Patch mode off, local doc tests. Oh, I wonder where's pause. Table of contents. Faked module classes. Fake path, fake file open. Fake file system. There's pause. Pause the patching of the file system modules until resume is called. After the call, all file system calls are executed on the real file system. Calling pause twice is silently ignored. Only allowed a file system object was created by a patcher object. This is also the case for PyTest FS fixture. Holds a patcher object to create it, allows a patcher object to fuse in the PyTest fixture. All right, so. So let's see if we can solve this. So we set up a fake file system, but it's not talking to anything. Or it's not like, Set up pi fake FS. Provides the appearance of a real directory tree. For unit testing. Pi fake FS from fake file system, fake file system. Path name. Unit test, pause. Yeah, so I'm in the unit test. Oh, but that's in the fake thing. It's all on the same page. Crap. Ooh, there's pause. Here we go. Set up fake file system. Set up. Pi fake FS, yeah. 
Additional skip names, modules to reload, modules to patch, allow root user, use known patches, patch open code, patch args. Find the file related modules to path stuff. Pause the patching system until resume is called. After the call, all file system calls are executing a real file system. So I should be able to do, and how do we call it? Do you just call pause? It's gotta like talk to something, right? Test case pause. Missing one required element self. Self.pause? Oh, look at that. And it read it. Okay. So that's how you can do it. So we've opened it, self, resume, create a file system, create a file, CSV file read, run that. Okay, that's cool. Then we can get back to our test. Okay, I'm glad I did this. This took a little while. We're not gonna add a real file. Real path equals this. equals my fake file.csv file so we don't have to load Sample text. Oh, because there's no sample text file.
Cool. So now we should be able to do this with um, System test. Real fake test. Zoom, create file. I want to test that with binary too in just a second to see if images go properly. I hope they do. It'd be really cool if they do. Maybe another rabbit hole if they don't, but this is this is good to do. Um, give me this. So, all right, so this let's just run this and see if this runs. No tests. Okay. Def test does fake file exist. Read fake file. I don't want to just check for its existence. I want to see for the contents of it. Right, that's really what we're doing. I mean, if it exists, that should be it. But um, so RFT equals real fake test expected hello world actual equals RFT read file. My fake file. File path, we're gonna be explicit. Self, assert equal, expected, actual. Come up here, def read file. I'm not going to use these right now. File path. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of this while we're here. File path. 
file path as file data return file data dot read. Why is that? Oh, doesn't like that. That's fine. I still don't get this maybe static stuff. I think the text strings are different right now. Yeah, hello world is not equal to quick brown fox. There you go. No, exploded. Oh yeah, still. Hello, world. There you go. Okay, sweet. So that's how you do it. Format of PyFakeFS. That's all their case. Load real file into fake FS. See, I really wish this was executable, right? So I could have the speed of getting to all like all my stuff that you get it from nvalt, but have it be executable. Figured out how to load a real file into the fake file system of a fake FS. So I debated whether or not I should put code in here. I kind of want to make that its own post. Post. Okay, cool. So pin this. PyCharm, sure. Python, sure. Testing. Test driven development. There we go. Oh, let's see if it works with an image. See, this is funny. Like I keep, I'm spending a bunch of time not doing the thing that I was originally going to do, but like, this is a leg. I'm building a Lego piece that I get to have from this point forward, right? So, how do we test an image? Um, let's go find a screenshot. I'm not sure what all these screenshots are going to look like or what's in these screenshots. So because I take screenshots of all kinds of stuff. There we go. This will work because what I want to do is just make sure. So that's a text file and that moves across fine, but I want to make sure an image file moves across fine if you're loading an image or a movie or whatever. Um,
Oh, I don't know what that in there. It's got a it's got a curse word in there. Which whatever, but still, like don't throw that in your tests. Screenshots. Da, 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 da. Oh, I definitely found it. This is one that came in from the NASA videos. So this is going to be our test. So the way we're going to test this is how are we going to test this? We need to do EXIF tool on it. So def test load image file to fake FS self. So test files. That dot ping, my fake dir that dot ping, whatever. Test dot ping. We're gonna call this test dot ping. We'll just rename it, just so we don't have to deal with all the other junk. Test ping. Okay. So first of all, let's just run it and see if it explodes. Seems to be okay. So now. Pi external command. Oh yeah, so we can just do import subprocess. Subprocess dot run commands are exif tool file path. Let's see what happens. I think it actually, I think it just runs it anyways, or it just does the output. File not found. My fake dirt test didn't find it. Uh, I should have found it. File not found. We did resume. Let me just resume back down here too. Oh, maybe it wasn't in scope there. Still file not found. Oh, come on. It's gotta work, it's gotta work, it's gotta work, it's gotta work. It worked up here. Still working up there? Yes. Just to prove it. Hello Worlds is not used to Hello World. Hello Universes. Should do Hello Universe now. It should be the whole thing, right? <laughs> so real file path, test files. Test files. Test ping. Oh, wow, I gave the size of it too? Look at that. Wow. Error, file not found. Oh, I wonder if subprocess goes, oh no, subprocess won't work. Cause it's, that's running externally. Like that's a command that's running outside of the thing. How do we see
is running batch mode. Only a single instance needs to be launched. Many queries. Yeah, see, I don't, this is just talking to it, but that's still going to be external. I just want to make sure the image transferred properly. And then like, and I can't think Python get image size. Open CV. Okay. In the case of a color image, it's a 3D ND array of row, height, and color. Three, okay. So that's not working. I don't think we need resume there. I, th I think this first resume here, I don't know where I'm going right now. I think this first resume here since we're creating it, it shouldn't matter that this is in the scope of this. Like this create should just be on the file system. Uh, terminal. Import C or pip install. CV2. Can't just open CV, right? I could not find a version that satisfies the requirement. Uh, what? Oh. No. How do we install it? Python has a library that handles images such as OpenCV and PIL. Here are the method requiring. Getting image. See, I don't like tutorials that don't show you all the way to do it. Like installation would be nice to have. Uh, here, let's try and install PIL. The Python image library, I'm guessing. Did it again. From PIL according to documentation. Okay, great. Where is the image module? That was cool. That's the other fun thing about this, right? You mess around with stuff and you see all kinds of stuff. Attributes code, image open. Show me install. What is the EFF bot? F bot. That's interesting. Imaging book. That's cool. Whoops, 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 whoops. Installing PIL with pip. Pseudo install PIL. Oh, did I do it uppercase? Use pillow. That's pill is basically dead. Pillows. Oh, interesting. What is this? This is from 2013. You have both Pythons install. You want to do this for.
what was this? Newer versions available, 8.1. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. So he's hard coded to 2.2.2.1. We're going to fix that. Latest version. All right, we're going to fix that real quick. He's pill and stuff. Pill is very good. Update to non versioned link. Hey, protocol. What's up? Oh, yeah. I. So, and I'm using virtual environments on that upgrade pip stuff now. So like, I see it all the time. Like, and it's like, it's off by one, I think. Yeah, 20.2.3 to 20.2.4. Just like, come on, just do it. I wonder if there's a way to hard code that or like manipulate that and just have it go. Here, get rid of it. There we go. Yeah, I'm actually using Pi Ven, Pi ENV now. I've been using VENV, but now I'm using the one that looks like this, Pi VENV. Um, I like it because it gives, so like if I'm in this directory, watch it not work right now. If I go up a directory, it drops the virtual environment, but if I go back into it, it automatically picks it back up. So like whenever you enter a directory with virtual environment, it just automatically picks it up, which is handy um pie charm doesn't pick up the virtual environments nicely every time you've got to like explicitly tell it every time you start a new project but that's okay just yeah keep plowing on it that's all you can do like i still i still find new stuff about it so like i think it's one of those lifelong path things right understanding like once you do ls and cd though like you're on your way and cat, yeah. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to make, I've got a fake file system that I've set up for testing and I'm trying to move stuff from a real file system into the fake file system. I got text files working. I just wanna check and see if uh, image files are working now. So I need something that I can look at image files and see if it's actually, you know, legit is the goal. So let's see if this works. Hey, something installed, there we go. Yeah, when you see somebody who really knows what they're doing on it, and it's just like, they're just going like, and actually here, I have the perfect gift for it. Let me find it, wait. When they're doing this, wait, where'd it go? It'll pop up in a second. They're like that, and you're just like, you're a madman. <sighs> cool. Uh, anyways, this is installed, so, oh yeah, here's my test image. I found this in those NASA videos that I've been messing around with, and I figure this is perfect for a test image. Uh, all right, so that installed, let's figure out how to use it. Get rid of that. Pillow, 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 find image height. So my theory here is if I find the height of an image, that means that the image didn't get corrupted when it's copied over. And I'm I'm copying it over with binary. So like, it, hopefully it'll work. Pillow, pillow, get image size. Pillow. Okay, so from pillow. Oh, wait, what? Pillow, P I L, get image size. Oh, so it's taken over now? Is that what's going on? That could work. Yeah, loaded. Yeah, like, I don't know. They're all ones and zeros under there. Like, whatever works for you to get your stuff done. Like, 
you know, for the longest time you couldn't get Linux to print and everybody was like, oh, it's the most amazing thing ever. It's like, I need to print a PDF. It's not the most amazing thing for that. And like nothing's the most amazing thing for anything. So like use all the tools. Um, I'm not religious about much of anything, um, including religion. Um, take your pick. Like I'm good with it all. All right, so we got that going. Now can we copy and paste? So this is the one we're loading our fake image in. So let's see if it loads as an image. So it should load from fake path. This is funny. I might have another thing to do here. Um, and then print IM size. Okay, let's see what that does. If this works. That'd be awesome. There you go. Okay, so it loaded. Sweet. So the so this works as a binary load for anything. Um, hello, Bob. Tech agno agnosticism is the way to go. Still working on your module. So I've got. I sp I set up last night to do the split um, of all the videos, but when I ran it last night, I started getting this error. Um, oops, let me see if I can find it. Uh, I'm testing on it right now, but there's, so there's an error that came up with FFmpeg. So like my thing is working for going through and finding all the videos and doing all the splitting, but FFmpeg, when it hits the video is giving this weird error, uh, too many packets buffered from output stream. So now I have to go make my own FFM. So like there's an application called scene detect, which is doing the scene detection and all the splitting for me. It outputs a file that shows you where all the scene detect happens or all the splices are, and then it actually runs FFmpeg. but whatever it's doing to run FFmpeg ain't working. So I'm having to rebuild FFmpeg commands that look at it's just straight text output and do that. Uh, and I'm trying to do a little bit of that on the Pi fake file system. So now I'm like in a rabbit hole on Pi fake file system stuff. Uh, but I think I solved that. So kind of all over the place. Oh, what am I making again? Um, so it's YouTube has a free music library and, but it's just MP3s. And so I wanted to get videos for those MP3s. And the way that I'm doing that is I'm bouncing off NASA's video API grabbing random videos, cutting them into random clips and randomly assembling videos to then make, you know, music videos with public domain footage. Um, just because I want to have that, I want to do it. Like there's no particular, like I've, I've got some ideas for some music stuff to do that I need to play around with, but like, that's kind of the key. So, and I did, I did the first one and it's kind of surreal. Um, but I'm going to do it for all the songs in the library, which is going to be, I don't know, a few thousand songs. Um, so I need to make, uh, I actually need to make a new account just to do it. Cause I don't want to flood my account to do it. Yeah. It should be interesting. Like, uh, the, the first one, like, I think it's up. Uh, channel. Yeah. Oh, I haven't put anything up in a while. But so like, it's just these random clips. And like this one was only done with a few video inputs because it was like a test video or whatever. But there will be hundreds, possibly thousands of videos depending on how much hard drive I have space. So it should just be all over the place. Um, and like, I was messing with one last night and like this chicken came up, like there's a scene with all these chickens in it or this chicken in it. So like, it's going to be just kind of all over the place. Um, yeah, there's rocket stuff. There's like people talking, whatever. It's just, it's definitely all over the place. So should be neat. Yeah, right. Just. Just mess with it. And so, and so I've got an idea for the the real, so the underlying goal with all that stuff too, is I want to get to the point where 
I want to build a little tool that lets me listen to like YouTube playlists, but then put links in chat so that I don't have to put music over the thing. You can either listen to what you want in on the stream, or you can listen to what I'm listening to, but I can listen to music that's copyrighted and you can listen to it at the same time, but it's not going over the audio stream of the chat so that whatever. And by the way, that probably exists, um, but I'm going to build one too, because why not? And I did a little searching. I didn't find one, so, but maybe my Google Foo was off. Um, but this is cool because I've got this now working. Um, that's the wrong one. So let me move these test files in here. Refactor that, that's fine. Do it. Refactor that, that's fine. Do it. Uh, let me just run this one more time, make sure everything is still passing. Let's run the full thing. Still passing. Okay, cool. Uh, so let me put a note in here. Fake FS. Note that with RB. Whoops. Oh, let me actually do this. So let me grab this full file again. I'll clean this up later. This isn't the greatest thing. I just, I like having these things as my test runs. For the read, binary, e.g. image files. will work fine. This code needs some test files. With it. I want this I'm going to post on this one. This is a good post cuz I, I I just spent like an hour trying to figure out how to do this. Um so I'll post this up. It it was not clear. And then like you don't really need to move stuff. So like I've got stuff on the file system that I want to test, but I want to use the fake file system. You can just say add file to file system and it puts it in the same place, but I want to be able to move it on the fake file system to an arbitrary location. Don't really have to do that, but it feels structurally in my head better. So that's what all this code's going to do. Um, and so I'll write this up because it's I, it took me a while to find it. Devin Crawford. I have not heard of Devin Crawford. Is that safe to look up? Scary WFORD. Wait, does his name sound familiar? Maybe. I feel like somebody's told me about this before. He's. Self learning software, electrical engineering, through research development. Filming the entire process on YouTube. Wow. Half a million subscribers. Sweet. 56 videos on half a million subscribers. Nice. Yes, yeah, he doing somebody's doing something like what I'm doing. I don't it does this doesn't look like the person that I was thinking of though. Downloading probably Google data. Started a company by accident. Yeah. Hacking the YouTube algorithm. Nice. We'll have to look at this stuff. This would be fun. Like, I would love to have this life. That would be awesome. You have to look. So I kind of don't want to look and see what he's doing because I'm like, I don't want that to like taint the way that I'm doing it. Right. Um, at least not until I've got the first one out. Yeah, this is cool. How old is this guy? Do we know? He says, why well, I'm not in school. College age plus a little bit. And it's super crazy, like a million views. I should look at his stuff to see what he's doing. Oh, nice. I'll have to look into that too. 
Yeah, so one thing that I was looking at doing, so I don't run, um, I basically just start my streams like when I start them, there's no like lead in uh, or whatever. And one of the reasons I was originally doing that, well, part of it is because I just start them. Um, but I was also like, ah, I don't wanna have to like cut out and clip out the stuff when you're first throwing it up to YouTube. But I was like, you could actually automate that, right? Um, Cause it's like, it's just doing the same thing over and over. You could use that scene detect to find the first scene make your clip a couple seconds earlier and then have it just like roll in. Um, so yeah, I'm, that's, that's super cool. I'll, I'll watch some of that stuff. Um, I just don't want to see his, his music plugin thing. Uh, not really anyways. Um, pod stories. Let's see what it's got. Time-lapse auto ramp Photoshop plugin. Pathfinding and C command line, fast led video editing, pathfinder visualization. Descriptions updater. Useful for updating social media. Yeah. Yep. See, this is funny. Like these are a, a few of these things are some things that I will be working on as well. Probably not AC automation, um, but maybe who knows? Like, I don't know. I'm just in the, in the mess around with stuff phase of my life, I guess. Uh, and we'll see what happens. I don't know what that word is. I mean, I see that you put university in there. University of Glue. I don't know how to, that, I'm being Americanist here, but that looks like a typo. Oh, that looks like that to me. I understand that that's not what that is, but like, oops, come here. Ah. Here, where is it? No, oh, Ontario, okay. Hmm, he's probably cold right now. Sweet, yeah. I'll have to look at this. I, somebody, it may have been you, told me about his stuff before, so I have to I definitely have to check him out. Um, and I feel like there's somebody else out there that's also a YouTuber doing some of the same kind of stuff. And again, it's, this is not an original or a new idea. Like there's probably companies out there that do it right now. I just didn't stumble across it easily. And I thought it'd be an interesting project to do. Like I've got a way that I kind of think that I want to try it. Um, and like, I don't expect it to be a business. I expect it to be a thing that I want to do just to have for me. And then I'll let other people use it as well. Um, Cause I'm not, I'm not right now after the thing of like, I want to start a business and I want to do my own thing. I've done that a little bit. Um, and it's not exactly my personality. Um, so I'd rather have like paycheck, uh, which thankfully, fortunately right now I do. So, and hopefully that does not go away anytime soon because that would not be fun. Uh, and I feel for folks out there that are, I know more than a few folks have gotten just bowled over by all this COVID nonsense. Not nonsense, but like COVID yuckiness. Six-year-old now, apparently, saying yuckiness. Um, okay, so that's got that code. Okay, so now I can be confident that Django scratch pads, we can get rid of those. Um, I can be pretty confident that I can set this up and move these things in. Um, but what I really need to do, and so part of this too, is I'm still doing the thing where I could write I could write these things up relatively easily without doing too much, just making it, like it's, it's not a giant amount of code for a thing to do, but I'm still trying to do all the TDD on it just as exercise for TDD. Um, yeah. That's cool. Clicking a button. Play ads. Uh, normal speed. Normal speed. Where's the play button? Oh, play. 
Dove? 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 Ma... Dove? Not the most... Uh... Wait, how do you link to that? Yeah, so you should be able to... Did it link out to it? What's this? Upload current content, no. Normal speed. There should be like a link button, right? Is that it? Upload. Insert one second of silence. Reload, trash, normal speed. Am I missing? Can you not just tell it like load this? Seems like a miss. I mean, it's free text to speech, right? So whatever, it's cool. To share, copy and send the following URL. It's not updating. Try it in Safari, see if that works. Safari is set for giant text. Hit enter. Yeah, and no, it doesn't, uh, it's kind of a bummer. Be cool to like have it. So I keep those show notes or whatever. It'd be nice to have that in there as the actual trigger for it, but whatever. So the short answer is yes, I would recommend a MacBook over Windows laptop for web development and software design. But like, again, this gets into that kind of that religious war thing. Like I've been using a Mac for a very long time. I know it and I like it. I like having the file system underneath that's basically, you know, Linux or FreeBSD or whatever. Um, if you're, the, the caveat would be like, what kind of web development are, are you doing? Like if you're doing all Microsoft stack on like Azure and all that jazz, probably not the best move to get a MacBook, even though you can do that. I know some guys that do that. Um, but like, and it's been a while, I've kind of out of that game a little bit, but like, I really like my Mac. I don't have any problems with it. I know a lot of people who use Windows machines. If I was going, let's put it this way. If I was gonna pick one right now, I'd pick a Mac. Um, if the cost doesn't matter to you, because there's some cost differential in there, I'd also go with a Mac. If you're gonna struggle to get one, Windows will be okay, right? I think, I don't have enough experience on it. If you can get one, that's where I would go. Super weird to say that though, cause like, I don't know much about what you're doing. Um, but it's solid. I, 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 my experience with them has been really good. That's probably the best way to say that. Um, and for the stuff that I've done over my career that has included web stuff, they not web stuff recently, the Mac has been a good solution for me. Ask Windows people, they'll probably tell you the same thing. Uh, so that's probably the non-helpful answer, but um, yeah, if it was me, I'd get one. Um, I'm going to get it. And another way I can say that is like mine's five years old. Um, I'm starting to think about getting a new one. I'm not going to replace it with a Windows machine. I'm going to stick with Mac. Ah, new website, right on. What'd you make? I need to update my website. I'm starting to look at React a little bit. See how that's gonna go. Um, all right, let me jump back in here for a second. File not found here. Oh, my foot is asleep. Oh, that's cool. I want to play around with Discord a little bit more. I'm on a couple Discords, but I haven't like done much with it or them. And I feel like there's some interesting, you know, like bot stuff that you could do or whatever in there. Um, yeah, that'd be fun to play around with. Um, all right, I need all this stuff to go away so I can see what's happening again. So load CSV file, we're gonna give it the CSV path. 
So that's what we're testing right now. Load CSV file. CSV path, no. Oh, ffmpeg commands. So really what we're testing is load CSV. And this is where I got stuck. This is where I got into the thing where I want to get this file. Did I close all that stuff already? I probably did, didn't I? Uh, so test load CSV. So we need to set it up. This could be a little gross, but I'm okay with that. So because I want the exp I want separation between my test structure and my directory structure. So sample data, sample one CSV. My fake path is going to be. scenes.csv and then we're going to do all this I should make this its own thing but right now it's going to be fine so we're going to pause the fake file system we're going to read the real path as binary we're going to resume the fake file system and then we're going to load the data from the real file into the fake file system and then we're going to tell it to read that from the fake path. Is this going to work? Passed. OK. So now I've got this up. Oh, that table editor pi uh, thing is cool. Look at that. That's awesome. There's a PyCharm plugin for table editing. It's got another one that's supposed to colorize it that I thought I installed, but it's not showing up. Text lines per row. Three. Oh yeah, so this, this CSV file doesn't have, it's not, it's a CSV file, but the first line is independent of the of the second and the rest of the lines. The second line is really the headers. The first one is like kind of metadata. Second line's the headers, and then the rest of the lines are um, the data. But that's super cool to be able to see it like this. That's super nice. I'm gonna follow it or like instead of having to throw it to Excel. All right, so I've got the file. And so right now I'm just hard coding. So I'm trying to make the FFmpeg commands is what's going on here. And so I've got the file, I'm pulling it into a reader. So how, what's the right way? So I should be able to identify the columns that I wanna have. which I think I'm just going to do start time code, end time code. So CSV reader. Now, how do we skip the first row? Oh, invalid continuation byte. That's a murder. Read a single line. Headings equals next. Oh, so you just do next on CSV. Oh, okay. But how would you do... All right, let's test a CSV thing here. Uh, let's go back to the scratch pad. CSV read second line. Uh, CSV re skip lines. CSV 
skip lines. Um, let's see, CSV line skipper. Pi. All right. Port CSV. Let's make a CSV file here. Sample one CSV. So we're gonna do this. A, B, C, D, er. Random nouns. I would like 11 nouns, please. Oh, why aren't you working? Oh, there you go, it's down there. I'm just looking for junk, but oh, of course not. I should reg X this, but I am not. So that's our junk row. And then H1, H2, H3, H4. And then D1, D2, D3, D4. And then D5, D6, D7. I'm not as good on the number pads or the number thing. Uh, okay, that's good enough for sample. So with open sample one CSV read as CSV CSV file. Uh, CSV reader equals CSV reader CSV file so if we just do this for row in csv reader print row it just prints out all the stuff but if we do next does that skip it it does okay sweet so there we go that's how you jump past it that was easy. Um, and then we can skip the headers. So there's our data. OK. See, I should really, so I want to figure out too, one of the things I want to do is, so I've got the executable notes, I've got that scratch pad, and I, but like I keep my notes in this NV all, but really what I'd like to have, there's a whole bunch of people doing this digital garden stuff, and it would be super cool to like not have to like write up a post, write up a post about this stuff, but like just have, like I should be able to, or what I'd like to be able to do, and which I will at some point program to be able to do is get skip Header rows. Right. This will start at the third line of the CSV file. Useful for skipping non header data. Skipping. Spell it with a G. I can't believe CSV isn't known. Learn. Surprised I've done that before. Okay, so that's cool. So that gives us that. Uh, yeah, and then post snippet. I think I've been, so I'm, I'm keeping notes on ones that I might want to do as snippets or like drop in as snippets. So I was like, can start building that. Um, so for this then, C 
CSV reader. Pass. So let's just get... Let's turn this back into text for a minute. So... I want to do this second one. And a thing that I've learned of late is only test one row. Like it feels like you should test two just to like whatever, but start with the one. So there's a one row. Because we're trying to get to, uh, we're trying to get to some data. Yeah, 2, 3, 59, and 11, whatever, right? Yeah, so we're trying to get to this. And I want to start the second one because I don't want to start at the zeros and whatever. I need to make sure I'm hitting the right one, even though these are very close. Why are these numbers the same? Uh, we can look. Length second... Time second. Oh, in time code, in time. Oh, in time code second. That's what we want. Wait, start time code, start time code second. Oh, 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 one's got, one's done in just seconds and one is done with the zero, 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 zero. Got it. All right, so there's that. So CSV reader. And what we're going to start with is... So I'm moving this into an instance variable. So I'm reading this, and I'm just making it an instance variable. I'm not sure that's the right way to do it, but that's what we're doing right now. So append, and I'm just going to do... I'm just going to hard code this to see if I'm in the right place. Come back here. Let's run this. So that's passing. Let's run all the tests, please. Five's passing. Cool. So if I take this away and I run, I'm still passing. Okay, so I'm doing this in the right place, and let's prove that by breaking it for a second. Yep, okay. I'm back. So with, we've got the CSV reader. Oh, 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 so here's what we want to do. For row in CSV reader. This is where we're going to append. But before we do that, we want to next it twice. And now let's see what happens. Get rid of that debug for a second. That passed, right? Because if we take out one of these, it's going to freak out because the it's jumping in with the other stuff. It's putting in twice. So there we go. Okay. So now we're in the right place. So now I'm just going to pull these out into variables for a second. Again, I want to stay... One, I want to stay as close to green as possible. So I'm just going to do... Step one is just to get the stuff into the variable slots where I'm going to hit them. And make sure this still passes. That's still passing. And so now I can try and find these values for real. Row. Who wants to guess how many it is? Zero, one, two is my guess. Row two. Can I get a row two, ladies and gentlemen? There we go. And three, four, five. Row five. Row five. That's got it. All right, so input. I've got something that gives me
So this is all coming from the same file. Ooh, I need to clear out... When I load the CSV, I'm going to go ahead and do this because I know this needs to happen. I need to clear that out when I load the CSV because every time I load the CSV file, it's a new video to process. All right, so now the so now what I need is the input and the output. Once I've got those, I've got the commands, and then it's just a matter of, of firing off the commands, I think. I'm starting to lose my structure of this code. Because we just load the config file, we load the file list, and then we split the videos. So load config. Gets us our source dir and our output dir. Load files load file list, just globs it and puts in the file list. And then what was the last one split videos, split videos. Split videos. So this is where, all right. So command set gets called there. Yeah. See, I'm bouncing around a little bit. Command set for raw file. So raw files. Load CSV file. Why do I feel like I'm using that name twice? I'm going to call that load scene CSV file. To get whoops, I'm gonna spell scene right. S C E N E. Load scene CSV file. Yeah, this is kind of all over the place. I don't really like it, but I want to see if I can power through it. Cause I can't. I can't. I'm, I've lost my hook about where to get my file path from. So we're loading that. This is a CSV path. Where do we are we gonna load that? We're gonna load that. So we're doing our command set. Okay, so that's what we need to do. Make CSV path. Okay, so then we pass. Okay, this is okay. Yeah, this isn't the best way to do this, but it's okay. Oof. Ooh. Name that anime. I almost I keep almost sending this and one or two others from that to in like work emails or whatever, but it's just a little bit too intimidating and it's um, you know, firearms. Right. So really what I should do is have the FFmpeg command here, except it, it needs to be a list of commands. So I need to, f I need to run. Yeah, split videos needs to run. So we make the directory, we run the split command. Then we need to load, this is, oh, this is kind of all over the place. See, this is where if I was doing it straight procedurally, it'd be easy enough to do, because it would just like be straight down, but like, it's the jumping back and forth that gets me. Uh, so my system disk filled up, which is not the disk that it was writing to. It's been read for forever, for as long as I've had the computer. Um, but something in the cache or something in the memory, and I looked around, I haven't found any big files. Um, but that, that filled up and that, that crashed it. So, um, but the, 
I, I've only taken up like 5% of the six terabytes or something. Actually, hang on a second. I'm just curious to see how many, how many it was. Uh oh, I hit a button wrong. Let's see. Survey says. Oh yeah, not even that. So uh, I've got 5.22 terabytes of 5.45 terabytes free. Um, but I've got no idea how, how much it downloaded. Like I don't have a counter on it. Um, but yeah, it crashed out. And then the splitter thing that I've got going to actually go split all the videos crapped out because it's got this weird FFmpeg error. So I'm having to re-go do that and make my own FFmpeg commands, um, which is what this is. Yeah, I'll take a look, Bob. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... And again, it's one of the, so it's actually, I could go through this pretty easily without doing all this test driven development stuff, but it's really good test driven development exercise. And also like I'm seeing the structure of the code differently. Um, and like I'm seeing like right now I'm hung because I don't have a good way to attach two things together and figure out where they're coming from, which is what they call a code smell. Uh, that is practice for me being able to do stuff better next time. So it's all, it, it's good exercise. Yeah, just, yeah, just throw something up on GitHub. That's fine. Oh, I didn't see that you can connect GitHub to, uh, to that. I don't use GitHub that much. Like, I don't like my private stuff going out there and like, some of this, so a few of these things, like my little snake case renamer or whatever, like I'll make that public at some point. But amusingly, I'm not going to do the actual repository I do the work on because like it's gross. I'll just throw stuff in a clean repository and just make it like nice or whatever. And I know there's ways you can do that with GitHub and like squishing commits and all this other stuff. But like I'm not, I've been a solo developer for so long, like or forever. So it's not, I'm not up to having other people look at my code. I, I think I've got something out there though. The The one that I do have, what's the one that I, go, I need to go look at? Yeah, this markdown table, oh, Hubinit. That's my Hub Initiative thing. Um, I need to update this one. So this one lets you just like format markdown tables. Um, Markdown being this format or whatever. So like technically that's a markdown table, it would render fine, but like that's how you actually want to see it. Um, and somebody actually gave me a pull request for that that I got to go look at. But yeah, I'll do that at some point just to, because why not hook up all the things? I think I hooked up my Twitter to it too, which I don't know what that does. I don't think it tweets. At least I hope not, because you would have seen a hundred of them. Possibly my space chicken last night. Did you see space chicken? I can't remember. Yeah, make private repos when sharing things. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oops, it went to. Oh, it didn't like it. We missed something. It went boom. Maybe it, it maybe it takes a minute. I don't know. It shouldn't. Yeah, I like the private repo stuff, but like I think it costs money pretty quickly if you start doing privates. Um, All right, so we've got this coming down. We're doing the split. We've got the split going. That makes the CSV file. So then what we need to do is load scene uh, CSV file. I didn't spell that right. Did I spell it right there? Nope, it did not. Or right there. Still running, still passing, still passing. So how do we pass? So we pass the CSV path to it. 
What does the CSV path look like? Actually, I'm gonna do debug because you're supposed to do debug and I'm getting better about doing debugging. So CSV path has, oh, my fake C, ah, oh, yeah, so it doesn't have a thing in it. Um, Cause somehow you need to pass Oh, I'm going to have to number these too. Crap. This sucks. So this has the CSV path and the output dir. I can just pass this command into it. But I need to add some more stuff to this. which is source path. All right, we're passing, we're passing. So let me do, I wanna skip this for work in progress just so I know to come back to it. I should put to do first. Does that skip with this? Yeah, I want to ignore it. Okay. And then, so I've got output dir. I've got this. Really, what I need is source path. And then source path. is gonna be the same thing as the raw file, which we need to come after so it doesn't explode. All right, so to get that, so this is gonna explode. Correct, because we don't have that in it. So we're gonna hard code this real quick, but I think we can solve it because it's already being passed in. So we're gonna hard code it to get green there's green. And then it should just be raw file pass straight through, right? Okay, so there's our source path. So now what we can do, yeah, so this is actually what we wanna pass into the load CSV file. Cause this gives us our CSV path, our source file, and then our output directory. Oh yeah, and we can actually read from the CSV. Okay, that's not gonna be too bad. Okay, I think I got this. Oh, there you go, Bob. That's loading. Uh, do you have it on um, GitHub Pages? Do you know? Have you tried that? Because it's it's a website, right? I mean, HTML, right? Are you familiar with the GitHub? I think these are all static files. So you should be able to flip it to GitHub pages and actually have it be live. Are you familiar with that? I'm not sure how it works. Didn't like that. Didn't like that. I think you have to do something to get it on GitHub pages. Uh, here, let's look. GitHub pages. So like this, this one that I had there for a second ago. Um, I'm pretty sure live. Oh, no, I, I made a domain for it. Never mind. Um, Let's get no pages where you get started. User site, project site, whatever. Create a new repo. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, it needs to be its own repo. So here's the basics on how to do it. And then all you would do is you would just copy 
whatever you have in that your existing repo, your on top servers repo into that. And it would just, it should just work. Um, it takes it a minute to kind of line up, but it basically gives you a, a URL for the website. Um, yeah, it'll just, it'll just line up at your username.github.io, which, oh, what I've got up there. Oh, there's mine from however long ago I did that. See, that's, there's my, that's my level of HTML. Um, really getting right up there with the design. Uh, liquid escape test, test video. Liquid escape test, I'm nervous to click on the test to see how liquid. Test video, there you go. Oh yeah, the uh, shooting machete slingshot. Most terrifying thing ever. I don't wanna show this cause it's gonna, YouTube's gonna ban me. For anybody who wants to see the uh, machete screenshot. But yeah, give that a whirl bop. That'll, that should get you, and, it, and it's cool too, because it gives you a display page, right? Um, I thought that's how I was doing this one, but actually I made markdowntable.com a domain. I was optimistic there. Uh, speaking of which, there it is. Where am I going? I'm going here. All right, so we've got all this stuff. So now really what I should do is just copy this. So I need, really what I should do is just add an FFmpeg. Oh, but I need multiple FFmpeg commands to this. So you could, let's get the command set just as its own thing. This way, this will be like, really, I should make this its own object um, is what I'm seeing right here. This is turning out to be much more complicated than I, or much more complex, not complicated, but complex. Maybe both. Um, and so if we just drop this in here with nothing on it, right? Empty list and run our tests, they're passing. Okay, so we've got that. Now we can pass this around. And so I can add my FFmpeg commands in here and I don't have to recreate the wheel for this. So now, real path. CSV scenes one, CSV scenes path. So that moves the CSV file in. So we're gonna call this something different. We're gonna call this create FFmpeg commands. Create FFmpeg commands. Call it down here. Oh, no, where'd it go? Oh yeah. but we're not actually going to do anything with it. Wait, oh, there we go. Where's this gonna pass? It's in command set, right? Oh, I'm returning the command set. Yeah, see, that should have been up here. I don't want to refactor that in yet. All right, this is going to be super gross. Um, Cause we're just going to copy all this junk. Cause we know that that's pretty solid. And like the only thing that we care about here, I want to change all this stuff. Uh, FFmpeg test, because I, I don't want collisions on the test if I accidentally do something wrong. And we need to set this as the fake path, because that's where we're dropping stuff. 
and our FFmpeg commands that we're going to target is this. I'm so far out of green right now, but it doesn't matter because I'm completely redoing this thing. So there's just this one thing. And we'll deal with the, what the input and output should be later. Oh, no, actually, input. Here, we can make this shorter. Uh, this is super gross, but whatever. Input. And then output. So this sample only has, there's only seen two, so I'm going to pull the numbers from there. Output. Wait, what is this? Oh, that's our split command. Okay. Detect scene. So here's. Output. For E. So we actually need to have. Crap. It wants the full file name. So this is, I like this part, right? You start at the end so that you know what you're trying to target. Wait, chopped files. Yeah, scene two. All right, so this is gonna explode like 10 different ways. That's cool, we're just gonna work through them. First of all, it needs to explode. Oh yeah, so. Right now I'm just hacking, right. Also the test is ignored, so we need to bring it back into line. Oops, there we go. Uh, input commands, so we're gonna do input commands, input commands. So this is gonna explode because this doesn't exist. So we can fix that. We're going to comment all this out for the time being. Def create those self star. What do we call the input commands? Let's alphabetize this. An o P Q R S. OK. I am not the best speller. Def that. Whoops, okay, we already got it. Pass. So let's just get back to green as quickly as we can. Uh, which is gonna be this. All right, now we're green, okay. So there's our input commands. Oh, shit. So this is okay. We don't need that there. This is gonna be empty. Because the only, yeah, the only thing we're doing with this, yeah, we're passing this thing around and we're just going to add the ffmpeg command to it, which I just commented here. So let's go back to this. Let's go back to this, 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 this. So that's going to explode because we're not, our assertion and our thing is not equal. Now we're gonna pass again. Whoops, no we're not, because that's down there. Now we're gonna pass again. Okay. So, I guess we wanna pass, yeah, so this isn't the best way to do it, but I'm on this line, so we're gonna pass those and see what happens. Um, Uh, so that's kind of what I'm doing. Like this, I'm just going to go ahead and read. So I've already got some setup involved in the command that does the splitting for me. Um, so all I'm doing is adding a function or a method uh, to do this other, to build this other command. 
But in order to do that, I need to know the source path. I need to know the CSV file to hit. I need to know the output directory. Since I've already got all that stuff in the, in the thing that was supposed to do it, I'm just bolting this thing on underneath it. Because if I had to do, um, if I just wrote a completely separate program to do it, I'd have to do all the same logic to create all those same things. So I'm just going to grab them from the existing thing, throw this ffmpeg command at it, and then have that same process run the ffmpeg command. Um, but it's, you can think of it like its own little module underneath here. So each one of these, um, you can kind of think of each one of these defs as what you would call a subroutine. Um, so it defines a function or a module, or sorry, a function or a method, um, which are basically the same things. They're small little pieces of code. And so when I, when I call this, so here's, um, so here's the actual thing. So create ffmpeg commands. So this is my tester. Uh, somewhere up here. I should name it the right thing. Hang on, so I can see it. Tests, create ffmpeg commands. So here's me calling it. NS is for the NASA splitter. And then this is where I pass all these commands to it. So input commands is this blob of stuff that's a list, basically, with the dictionary inside of it. So I'm passing the input commands to it as a variable also called input commands, which gets picked up here. And then from here, I go do that processing. So that's kind of the subroutine or the method or the function um, to kind of like split stuff up. Yeah, yeah. So this will be like these things will be There'll be the downloader that's going and then the splitter that's going and then eventually the assembler will be going and all three of them will be independent so that they can all run at their own pace um, and and do their own thing basically um, as for but this is really specific to this use case um, in terms of it, it's really only going to be designed for these nasa clipping videos but it would be easy enough for me to extract and lift out the the elements that do the clipping and that does this ffmpeg stuff like i could pull that stuff out and because it's already you know this once i finish this create ffmpeg commands i could feed it with anything i could feed it with other stuff besides the nasa stuff and it would just make the commands so it's basically a box that you feed it um you know a source path a csv directory or csv path and an output directory you feed those things into it and then it creates the ffmpeg commands for you on the outside um, so you can shift and lift that box kind of wherever you want um, and what i'll do so I, you've seen me use this stuff before so this is my little notepad right my book of magic so lots of times i'll just clip these little things and those are the little chunks i like to call them legos that you can make so like i spent an hour or so today building a new lego that lets me you know move stuff from a fake file system to a real file no sorry from a real file system to a fake file system for testing that took a couple hours but i only have to do that once because i've got the code now and it's in my magic book so that's kind of the approach um or not kind of the approach that's that's the approach that's how i kind of jump through this stuff but yeah it'll be uh it'll be running uh sometime today i hope um definitely Ooh, it's 2 30 wow i should eat lunch at some point um, I want to get this solved before I do that though, because I feel like I've got most of the pieces ready to go. Now that I've kind of got, and, and I'm not doing this well. Like I recognize ways to make this more efficient and there's refactoring and coding, which is where you go back and make things more better. Um, and like remove duplication is one of the big things. Um, so I may actually do that on this one. Like I, I won't need to, once it's running, you don't need to refactor it. In fact, once you've got running code, the best rule of thumb is don't touch it. Um, but I may go through this as an exercise of doing refactoring when you need to, for when you need to do it more. Um, like if, and one of the reasons you would do refactoring is if you've got a process that runs properly, but it takes five minutes to run and you need it to take 10 seconds to run, that's when refactoring comes in because you need to have the same inputs doing the same outputs, but you need this thing to go faster. Uh, you need the box to, to, to do its magic faster. 
Uh, all right, so we've got this coming in for our input commands, right? And we're still green, I think. Yep, we're green across tests. So there's a little green check mark. Um, all right, I forget. Can you put a debugger on pass? I don't think that works. It does not. You have to have something actually happen. Um, Oh, there you go. Nice. See? Got a hot website. Look. Find amazing servers interact with your friends. Nice. Not a little bit. I've got my my font size is giant for sharing on screen. Oh wait, that was Chrome. That wasn't too bad. Never mind. There you go. Ooh. Uh music. I don't know what I'm actually doing on here. See what's going on? Servers. Do you have a list in there yet, or is this just the um, the basic setup? Because I don't see servers yet. Or is that, I don't know if that's wired up yet. That's in its current glory, that's awesome, yeah. Uh, I'm on Chrome, so I don't know if that's messing with it. Oops, that's the wrong thing. Let's look at the actual thing. That's wrong. Let's see if it does different in Safari. Uh, I don't have a Discord logo, I don't think. Again, this is probably giant text. That's probably more what it's supposed to look like. Oh, there's a cert. There's login. Nice. Oh, that's cool. What'd you build this in? And also, how there should be a way NASA splitter NASA. Wish I could read that, but you can't. Um, NASA splitter. Oh, input commands. There it is. It, it did come through. Zero, source file. Oh, okay, cool. So now we can build our FFmpeg command. So we've got we've got our test framework in place. We know what we're looking for. So we're creating the commands. We're actually going to return this one. So let's call this... Uh, wait, or do we, yeah, so we want to call this, this is where I go back and forth on whether or not you should put stuff as instance variables or as, um, return values. This probably should have been instance variables. So this is going to explode because that's not returning anything, but now we're going to hard code the return. Commands equals all that jazz. We're just hard coding because we want to return those and get the green. There's a green. And so now we can build this. Yeah, this is going to be gross. Oh, this is going to be gross. So with so ffmpeg commands equals nothing with open whoa, input commands csv path which should be hot right now as csv file pass so this could run maybe the file doesn't exist yet List indexes must be integers or slices, not strings. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, gotcha. So we need to go. 
for input command in input commands with open. Right now I'm just trying to get this stuff to open. Uh, input command CSV file, CSV path, read as CSV file, pass. So just step by step, let's see if we can make this thing go. Whoops. Oh, I broke something. What did I break? Oh, it doesn't like that path there. Pass there. I like PyCharm highlighting stuff for you. All right, so we've got that. So for input commands, in input commands, does this pass by reference or by value is the question. Because uh, we might just be able to feed those things right in. Which would be awesome. Where'd my other thing go that I deleted? Yeah, so CSV reader. And then we want to do next. Whoops. Next CSV reader. Next CSV reader for row in CSV reader. Print row. I'm just going to see if I'm again, I'm just seeing if I can get there. Okay, we got there. So input command ffmpeg commands this is gross this is not how you want to do that dot append that all right just see if that compiles does I just want to run all the tests to make sure we really are passing here all the tests are going so now if I return input commands plural is that gonna work haha <laughs> success oops Hey, web dev, trying to figure out where all the stuff disappears to. Happens all the time. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, so we've got that. Now we actually just need to make these commands happen. Which, if I was smart, wait, create a five commands. Oh, so we're just appending. Yeah, yeah, okay. So here, we just need to pull out all the parts that we need to have. So here's our input file, which again, I'm just gonna move all this stuff into variables, whoops, into hard-coded variables so that we've got it, right? Because then what we can do is replace these with the actual calls that make them happen. That's our output file. Okay. So that's not awful. All right. See if that's passing because we've got just a hard coded. Yeah. So we've just got it hard coded now. But source path is a thing that exists.
Yeah, this should totally be its own. Steve, to your to your question earlier, this could this section could kind of be its own thing. It would still be in the same code, but you would you would define it as its own little move out thing. Um, but I don't. I'm not there to redo that right now. I'm in the. I'm in the. I'm really close to the end of it. I don't want to like go back and try and refactor all that stuff out because that would take way more time, and I'd it would break it in a bunch of different ways to have to do that. So. We're just going to push forward with this, even though it's kind of ugly, um, but still tested and nice. Um, so row two, should be here, please work, nice. And then just to mess with it, sorry, uh, I just want to make sure I'm going to put something in here and intentionally break it. Because I want to make sure that I really am on the thing that I think I'm testing. And it sure looks like it. So cool. So now we're going to do row five. And now we need to figure out how to do this. There's, there's several different ways I could do this. Um, I'm just trying to figure out, because I've got the output directory. Let's just go with the pieces that we've got. So, I'm gonna split the output directory here. So it's separate from the file name. See if that still passes. Yep. Okay, cool. And then I think I've got that as its own variable. Output dir. Hopefully that still passes. No, we exploded. Oh, that's because I'm just doing gobbledygook. So output dir equals this ffmpeg command needs to have that for this, right? Now try it. No, still missed it. What did we miss? Click to see the difference, please. FFmpeg, SOM. FFmpeg commands somewhere. Oops, which one was which? Actual, we want that. This is expected. Is that it? That shouldn't matter. Oh, there it is. Scene detect some, some expected. There we go. That's where it was. How about that? There we go. This actual doesn't exist anymore. Let's get rid of it. Because this is the actual that we're pulling in. Everybody passing, everybody's passing, everybody passing, everybody's passing. Five tests. So now we just need to make that string. And we've got it. Like you could call this off to a method, but I'm just going to do it straight here and not worry about it. Um, for input commands with input CSV reader. Uh, So I could make it easier by just 
hacking through it a little bit, but uh, now we can do this. Um, pi split text get file extension. I think we got our got our lesson there. I think I'm already using this. Um, input command source path. Yeah, this is all over the place. <laughs> this is all over the place. So put a debug right here. We should see file name. Oh, file name is going to be the full path, I think, though. Yeah, so we need to split down. with base name pi base name oops wait file name without extension OS base name Debug that. File name. There's our file name. Okay. So that's that. So we're going to put this right here. We're going to take this out. And put this here. Run that. See if we're still passing. We are. And then we're going to take this out and put this right here. Wait, is that right? No, that's wrong. Put that right there. There we go. And then, oh, we need the extension. Ah, well, okay, we got the extension, so that's fine. Um. dot that so this comes out that goes here this goes here this goes here this goes here this is gross we shouldn't be assembling this right here we should have assembled it somewhere else but that's how this is going right now uh and the file extension so this is cool we actually just pulled that out so this is nice because we need this on that. Oh, come on. Oh, it keeps the dot in there. Okay. Okay, that's fine. We can leave the dot and leave the dot for there. Now if we run it. There's our five test passing. Okay, so now we just need the two, which should be row zero. Because that's in the sample CSV. I'm just pulling from this because it's scene number two. So row zero. There we go. So we run our split command. And then that gives our gives us our ffmpeg commands. Let's clean up a little bit. Take that out. Let's just run a full test. Oh, actually, we don't need this for this. I figured that out later. Yeah. So test. So that should be all of our FFmpeg commands. I think. Now I just gotta run them. So here. Oh, we gotta call this. 
for command and command set. What is this doing? This takes all the input commands. Full command set, this is gross. Full command set is... Create FFmpeg commands from all those, which is not at all how you should do this. So we've got our full command set for And see, now I don't have a good, like, now I just kind of need to test. Um, oh, don't, I could set up an integration test or I could just kind of run it. Um, FFmpeg command in full command set, no. So in command, this is gross. All right, so I think the only way we can test this is to do it up here and see what happens. Won't, won't. Oh, create a bag commands needs two arguments which is gonna be uh, what do we call it? Input commands. <sighs> this is gonna suck. Uh oh, lost the Discord logo. Happy bug hunting. I have been there. <laughs> right? Also, I gotta figure out what I broke here. So, no such file or directory. NASA TE test clip video output scenes. Where did we get that? Did I hard code something? TE. Scene detect, detect. Guess I could do TE. Test, I could just look for test clip. Oh, test clip, output. Scenes, well, let me go look at the video first, or at the thing first. I don't know where I'm going. Desktop, Let's try the desktop. Video. Gotcha. That's why that was happening. Oh, we already got them. Okay, so that part's still working. Video clips. So this is the troublesome one. Uh, old. Oh, right, because I'm not making... I turned it off. Oh, yeah, I'm just running the commands. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got to turn off... 
the other thing I got to turn off. Oh, I got to do all this test command set. Make output dir. So this test command set, I just need list videos. I don't need split videos. That's the whole purpose of this. All right, let's see what happens. He loading config, loading video. See, yeah, this is why it's a mess. Loading config, loading video list. No such file or directory. OB, OB scenes, that CSV. Which that should have been. It didn't run, why didn't it run the process to load file lists, split video lists, split videos. I feel like maybe I'm not doing something. What does load file list do? Okay, that gives me those. What does split videos do? Split videos. Pulls the full command set. Setting up FFM peg commands. Oh, 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 okay, 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 right. I got it. So this is this command is calling for the file that doesn't exist yet. I see what's going on. You can't create this yet. Okay, how do we back out of that? So, I still need to do this. I just need to make two passes through it, is what it amounts to. Um, so, full command set can just be... I'm just going to leave that for a second. Actually, we can do this. Self command set. So, that should be the only place. So, let's see if that gets us going again. Oh, my mouse decide. There it goes. Oh, uh, did I lose it? Oh, well, whatever. I'll do it again in a second. So this should make... There we go. Okay, so that's making the scene detections. Now I just need to apply them. And... I have to loop back through full command set is yeah this is gross self that with input commands equal to self command set because now we can find the csv files that should be there and then for command in full command set 
for ffmpeg command in ff in command ffmpeg commands print ffmpeg command. So we're just going to print them out to start with. So this is going to skip them all. Oh, no. It actually ran them. So there's a full path. Okay, let's actually just run one of these and see what happens. Uh, let's actually find... See if we can find 15. That was the one that was the problem. 13, 14, 15. So this... Come to our terminal. Term terminal? There you go, it's running. Okay, so that's the commands, hopefully. And the directory should all be built. Everything should be running. Favorite language and why? Right now it's Python. Um, the I started in Perl, uh, I did some Ruby stuff, and now I'm in Python. Um, I really, when I did Ruby, I really liked it. Like I like the structure of it. Um, but these days I like Python mainly cause I'm the most familiar with it. Uh, the it's what I'm doing all my work in. Um, I also enjoy the language. Like it's not, it's, it's relatively easy for me to get my head around. Um, the it's relatively straightforward, like, and part of it too is keeping, I'm going more with like the classes and there are so classes with instances um, and trying to do the test stuff. And it's structured pretty well for that. Uh, I'm about to start doing some JavaScript stuff for React. It's been a while since I've done JavaScript. Um, I haven't done it in years. So I'm curious to see how that's changed. Um, but yeah, right now it's Python. Um, and But I'm not, again, I'm not, whatever language you're using that gets the job done that you need to have done, fine. Um, I, I went back, it's like, I really enjoyed Perl when I was doing Perl because that was the first language I learned. But like going back and looking at it now, I don't want to do Perl again, um, but I'm not, you know, whatever. Uh, is HTML kind of language? Sure. Like I, there's like religious wars over that, but like, it depends on what your definition of a language is. To me, if you're writing instructions that tell the computer to do something and the computer does the thing, that counts. So you're basically saying at the, you know, a really simple example, right? Is like make a header, make a paragraph, style it. So sure. Um, but like, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, or I don't worry too much about that. Like it's just a tool to do a job. Um, yeah. HTML language counts. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, I, some people are like, it's, that's not, to me, that's not a fruitful argument, whether or not it's a language or not. It's a tool. Um, whatever label you want to apply to it, go ahead. If you really like, if somebody really doesn't want to call it a language, okay, like, sure. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't change the fact that that's how you build web pages. That's like what all web pages are made off of. So, so what? You could call it a. A widget. Uh, no, no, no. I've got no good words right now. Um, but yeah, and I don't let people like, I don't know. There's there's a bunch of people like, I don't know, belittle stuff about that, right? Oh, this is the one. Your spacecraft and components suffer through a grueling battery. It's very loud. This was the one that was the problem. So a thing that I realized that I kind of need to do what I kind of don't want to do right now is I actually need to check and see. Oh, this is going to suck. If the output path already exists. Which you could actually do that here. Yeah, PHP is not a beautiful language. Um, I did a bunch of PHP stuff too, though. It's the same. It's the same thing. Like once 
I think you can get used to working in any language. Like I was super used to working in Perl, right? But like, um, where is which import photos? Um, uh, actually, let's do this. Copy user local bin import photos to desktop. Uh, desktop import photos. So like, where's this get ugly? Oh, this isn't actually awful, but like, here's a bunch of Perl stuff and like, well, these are reg X's or whatever. So, eh, this isn't as bad as I looked at it last time. Um, but it's all, you know, variables, loops, conditionals, right? That's, that's your basics. As long as it can do that, go for it. Um, that actually didn't look as bad as I remembered it. Last time I looked at it, I was like, yeesh. That maybe not have been the one that I was looking at. I looked at something a while ago that was some old code that I written in Perl and it was, it was not well done. Um, so yeah, so what I need to, so the last thing I need to do here, we're going to commit this. Um, that is the wrong project. NASA splitter. Set up to create FFmpeg, FFmpeg commands. So now I just need to go pull, I need to not, I need to look and see if the output file exists. Oh, which is where I should have done this already. Ah, crap. Oh, well. Um, because if it exists, I don't want to, I don't want to spend the cycles to redo it because that takes forever. Like it won't hurt anything. It'll just take forever. Um, oops, lost it. Yeah. So like, and again, I'm used to it. So like, I'm not a big fan of the Windows operating system, not because it's bad, but because I don't know it. Um, one of my old jazz professors used to say, you don't like what you don't know. And I think that's a really good thing to keep in the back of our heads is lots of times when we don't like a thing, it's because we're unfamiliar with it. Um, and like, and silly stuff, like I, I get frustrated sometimes. So I use this, a Windows machine as a stream PC I get frustrated with it sometimes because I'm used to like where I hit control C or command C, whatever is different than on that keyboard. It's over two keys and like, that's frustrating, right? On school Mac, a slip off side of application slides off your screen. Hmm. I don't know about, I don't know what you mean by that. I don't have, I don't think I have that. Oh wait, maybe, yeah, there's all these like weird slidey desktop things or whatever. Um, I don't use those, I have those turned off. Uh, I, if that's what you're talking about. Bye bye. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I think I know what you're talking about. There's like, cause it's like, you can have the full I don't know how you make it happen. But yeah, somehow there's a way to like go full screen and then have them kick out or something. Um, which I've got all that stuff turned off. I don't like any of that stuff. Uh, I just, I like Windows. So like, to me, it's like control tab to find stuff or like, you know, the hotkey finder or whatever. Um, that's what I do basically all the time. So <coughs> output file path. This will just gonna be this. Format. Are we inside? Oh, we need to be inside this. And then we need to do the last one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we take these and we put these here. Uh, 
And then we take this and replace this with this. One, two, three, four. Question is, do our test? This is why I like test, right? Because I just completely redid the way that that works. And one of my tests is passing, or all my tests passing, and all my tests are passing. So I just completely redid the way that I'm doing the pathing, and it still works. Um, if not path output path is file. Creating FFmpeg command for oh, let's make it an F string. Whoops, come here. Else print. Uh, output file, output clip, clip already exists at there. All right, so now if we run, there's our creating FFmpeg commands. 13, 14, 15. Uh, oh, did I delete it? Wait, that should have not done that. Crap. OB, 9, 2, whatever. Oh, it's a different thing. Oh, here's OB, 9. OB, 9. It's like OB, 1, but different. OB, 9, 2. Give me. There you go. Clipper already exists. Aha. Okay, cool. Wait, why didn't that run stuff? Oh, wait, 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 all right. So how do we execute commands? Pi, execute external command, OS system. Cross your fingers. There's some FFmpeg stuff happening. Oh, that happened very fast though. That also happened very fast. Uh, we're in 09 or OB. Oh, it's making clips. Oh yeah, those clips are only like a second long. Oops, I should have done that one. It looks like it's going, and it did 15. Oh, let me delete. Uh, crap, it already set up the commands. Um, well, it already did 15. Actually, hang on. We're going to stop this. Stop. Kill. I don't know if that stops it because it's an external command. Oh, it won't stop FFNPEG, but it'll stop. Who? Exit code 137. Nice. All right, so let's actually delete all those. I think FFmpeg is still running because I hear the fans going. Oh, no, it just stopped. Okay, cool. Uh, found what was missing. It was missing one forward slash. Yep, that'll do it. Uh, yeah, the, so what, so I'm using PyCharm right now, um, which is actually free for the community edition 
for running Python. Uh, which I really like. It's got, if you're using Python, it's like I used to code with just like Sublime Text, but I've been using this or Vim, whatever. Um, but it's pretty good. And FFmpeg is just a command or software, whatever. that lets you do command line stuff with videos, basically. So, uh, I want to, I've got these source videos, like this one's 430 meg, you know, it's whatever, how many minutes long? Three and a half minutes long. I wanna cut it into little clips. And so I've got software called Scene Detect that tells me where to cut it. And then FFmpeg is what I'm using to actually cut it. So all those little commands that you see um, right here. So this is the command. And this says, take an input file, which is this path, which is an MP4 file. SS is start time. So start at 25, 0, 0, 0, 25 seconds, whatever. 2 is the end time, 26 seconds. And then here's the output path. Um, so that's all that, like you can do all kinds of complicated stuff with it. All I'm doing is cutting videos. So that's FFmpeg. Um, and it's it's pretty slick, it's pretty powerful. <laughs> uh, I just bang my head into stuff until I get it to work. Um, but uh, part of it too is I've been doing this a long time. So I've got experience doing, you solve enough of the problems that are similar enough times you start figuring out kind of the patterns of how to do them um so that's after you do it for a long time uh, or after you keep doing it and you keep practicing it and you keep practicing intentionally you start getting faster and better at it and you start learning stuff and like for me it's a big trick too is like keeping this this list of notes like i don't remember off the top of my head how to do this stuff but i know i've got it in notes so i can go find it you can always search for it on the web and find it but that takes longer and you might not end up in the same place. These are like the refined version. Um, that's actually one of the biggest things I'd recommend for people is is messing is getting something like NVALT or something that's really fast and really easy to put notes in, and really fast and really easy to find your notes. Um, and I haven't seen anything beat NVALT, um, which is this one. Subscribe, get a notification, and where's NVL? What is it? Somewhere down here. Uh, NVL, there you go. Oh yeah, so the download's at the bottom of that page. They're making a new one. Um, they're making a new one called NV Ultra that's gonna be hopefully even better. Um, like I, I struggle with NVALT a little bit because I put so many, I've got like three to 6,000 files in there depending on what I'm doing. And I kind of slow it down because that's a lot. Doing a language every increment. Nope. That is crazy. Um, like that's a whole different level of stuff. Like I don't have enough kind of basic experience for it. Um, the, yeah, no, not so much. Um, all right, yeah, let's actually, so let's run this. I'm going to run this and we'll see what's going on. Now I got to get some food. All right, so this is doing the scene detection. For OB, so this should produce, this should throw out a CSV. Yeah, so this is a raw start. So I'm just pointing at the video directory. We're looking at the videos. And so it just made, so it's looking at this video. It just made the directory for me. It's doing the scene detection. This will make the CSV file. Put that over there, it's fine. Yep. Oh, okay, so there's the scene file. Oh, okay, I understand. Yeah, so the way that I'm looping through this, right, it's going through all the commands first because I need to create the CSV files before I create the FFmpeg commands. But because I've got those things bunched up together, I need to run through all the CSV files and then run through all the FFmpeg commands. 
So it's going to need to look at all the videos first and do the CSV files, and then it'll run the run the command to go over the FFmpeg stuff. For full command set. Right, 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 yeah. This is what loads in the FFmpeg commands. So this should go in a second. I think there's only three videos in there. And this will make all three CSV files. There's one, there's two, third one's coming up. And as soon as it's done that, it'll go build the FFmpeg commands by looking at the CSV files and processing them down. And then it'll run the FFmpeg commands. I hope. Nope, not not really. Um, I I think I think. Well, so I make my own tools in general for this type of stuff, but I that's like. I use. I use the language, the existing languages to make my tools. I've never really thought, I, I don't even know, that's not true. I know how you would do it a little bit, but like going through and programming it, if I ever tried to do that, that would just be to do it for its own sake, which maybe, but more when I'm doing projects, most of the time I have a specific thing in mind that I want to try and do. And I've never run into anything where an existing language couldn't get me there. If I ever run into something where an existing language could get me there, that would be when I try and look at language stuff. Um, that's unlikely to happen, um, but it may at some point. Uh, oh, here's the FFmpeg commands running. So now we should start seeing, yep, there's our videos starting to pop in. And then let's make sure 15 shows up because that was the critical one. There's 14. There's 15, it's writing it. If we make it to 16, we should be in good shape. Uh oh. Trouble. Oh, there's 16. Let's make it to 17 before we click on 15, just to make sure it's all fully baked. There's 17. So this was the problem one. There you go. That's got it. Dun, dun, dun. Sweet. That was not, so that kind of is not the best part of those, right? Cause that like that software, I had software that was supposed to do that for me, but it didn't. But the good news is that I could hack into it and do it myself. So I can get, I've got the output now that I've got. I've got two two of the three things running. The downloader and then the splitter. And so those are just going to be running. And then we'll make the assembler, which I've got. You know, I've done this. This is the second time I've done it. So hopefully it won't be uh, too bad um, to, to get through that. Yeah. Huzzah, as they say. All right, I'm going to let that run, but I got to go eat food because it got late and I wasn't paying attention and I am hungry. So catch you soon. I'll be back on later tonight, probably. Uh, not probably. I'll be back on later tonight. I don't know what time yet um, to kind of mess around with the next next part of this, maybe. Or maybe I'll take a break for this. I'm not sure. Um, but we'll uh, we'll see you soon. So y'all take it easy. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Take it easy. Take it easy. We'll say it like eight times. Take it easy.